What I'm going to do is show you three Kindles to show how they've changed over the years. On the screen here is the old Kindle keyboard. Next up is the newest Paperwhite. And then finally we've got the brand new £59 Kindle, the entry level Kindle. As you can see the screen sizes are all the same but what has changed is the physical size of the machine. On the bottom I've got the Paperwhite, on the top is the new Kindle, and one thing I immediately noticed is that Amazon has changed the plastic. The black one is, uh, is rubberized and it's a lot more grippy. Now I've just raised the left hand end here so it's on a slight ramp, two pound coin isn't moving. As you can see on the new one it moves so it's a lot less grippy. I'm grateful to someone on Amazon called Kickboxer who has told me that in actual fact the uh, new white plastic is much less likely to uh, attract fingerprints and dirt and the like and also that the black rubberized one can deteriorate with age. So in short some people will prefer the old grippy black uh, style of the paper white and some people will prefer the new plastic. What I'll do is I'll show you the new one and the paper white side by side. So on the left there, that is the charging port. That is the light that comes on to show it's charging. And here's the on off button. So just press that in. Now I've set a password on this and uh, just to make it, just for the purposes of this review, it's one, two, three, four. So you can see the touch screen there, very sensitive. Then I have to swipe to go in. You don't have to set a password. Uh, on this one, I haven't set a password. So just press the button and it'll go straight in. Swipe it. There we are, so I'll click on the same book room because I want to show you the difference in the um, quality of the screen. The one on the left, the new Paperwhite is 167 pixels per inch, the one on the right is nearly double at 300 ppi, but as you can see it doesn't really make a fantastic amount of difference. There's nothing wrong with the 167 ppi. You can notice it, as you can see the opening sentence, today I'm five, it's sharper on the right with the paper white, and the next paragraph where it says, mm, ma does a big stretch, again you can see it's sharper on the right, but you can get away with it. The biggest difference is this, I'll tap towards the top of the screen, that brings up the main menu, that icon there, press on it, and there is the light on the paper white. Turn it up and as you can see the light immediately comes on and the point here is that that light is useful even in daylight. You can see how on the left it shows the uh, that with no light the uh, so to speak paper looks quite grey. And what I'll do now is I'll just show you that on this one here you can tap the same icon but there's no light to turn on. Come back in here and I just want to show you that that light is fully adjustable so you can set it to any level at all. I'll turn it off now in order to uh, make it a fair test to show them side by side. I got mine with special offers and you can see the adverts there, the small thumbnails at the bottom and the advert right at the bottom. I'll zoom in here on one of my books and as you can see that flash on the top right, 19%, it shows that I'm 90% of the way through this book. What I'll do is tap on it to take it in, as you can see, very responsive. What I'll do now is show you the ease of turning pages. Tap on the right, turns to the right, tap on the left, turns to the left. However, there's something really confusing here. You would think when I tap here, that it would turn to the left. It doesn't, it turns to the right. And that is because you have to tap all the way over in the left-hand margin here to get it to turn backwards, and that used to get me lost. The simple solution is to swipe instead, because you can do that anywhere on the page. I'll show you one of the useful features. Bottom left it says the location, bottom right the percentage of the way through the book and it's 19% as you saw on that flash earlier. I don't like location so all I have to do is press on it and it changes to the page number. If I don't want that, next press takes me to the time left in the chapter, one more press takes me to the time left in the book. If you don't want any of that information on, one more press removes both the information on the left and the percentage of the way through the book on the right. Once more, takes you back to the start. What's great is the page numbers are real page numbers. In other words, this page, which is 186, is the same as page 186 in the physical book. I should add that some books don't have page number, time left in chapter, time left in book displayed, because it has to be enabled by the publisher. So with some books, particularly old ones, you will only get the location. 
I'll show you how to navigate your way around a book. Press towards the top of the screen, it brings up the main menu. Press on Go To, and there you can see that I'm on Chapter 12, Barbarossa. If I want to go to Chapter 11, just press on it. And let's go to Chapter 15, which is on the next page. So I'll just swipe down, go in, there we are. And now I'm going to skip forward to Chapter 19, because I want to do something else. What I'll do is show you how to highlight and annotate, so let's highlight the first sentence. There we are, press highlight and it's done. What I'll do now is highlight another sentence, sorry not highlight it, I'll uh, annotate it. So if I now press note instead of highlight and I can type in my note, so I'll just type something in. As you can see, no problem here with the typing, uh, it's a uh, very sensitive screen. And what I'm going to do here is use the predictive text. So there we are, press save, and there is a small number there, six, because it's the sixth note that I've made. So if I press on it, up comes the note. I've just deleted the note. I'll show you how I did it. It's very easy. Just highlight any part of the highlighting or note and press delete. I'll show you another great feature, which is uh, X-ray. Don't get this in a real book. If I don't know who this man is, Heydrich, uh, what I'll do is just highlight it and up pops uh, details on him. Click on Open X-Ray. That bar there shows me every time he's mentioned in the book. So there I am the first time he's mentioned. That little grey bit is actually where I am at the book right now. Uh, and the text underneath is uh, the expansion of each of those dots. And if I want to go to anything, in particular, I could close it there, but if I actually want to go to any particular uh, of those little spots, then I click on it there, and it's taken me to that part of the book. Here I'm using it with a non-fiction book, but it works just as well with a novel when you can't remember something about a character. X-ray works with real names. There's something that works with ordinary words. I'll show you that now. It's called Vocabulary Builder. But let's say I don't know what anti-Semite means. So what I'm going to do is highlight it. Oops, I move my finger there, so click outside again. I just touch and hold it, and up pops the de dictionary definition, and click outside. Now, it's done something in the background, and to show you that, I need to go back to the main screen, click on those three dots in the top right, and it's put it in Vocabulary Builder, so I'll just go into that. And there, top left, is the most recently added word. Click on it. There's that dictionary definition that, I, that just popped up. And if I click on the right tab, it's lifted from the book that I was reading. As you can see, it says the Second World War. Uh, it's lifted the sentence, so I've got the word in context. And what I can do is I can just go straight back into the book. You can turn Vocabulary Builder off if you want to, so you can look up the words in books without actually adding them to the Vocabulary Builder. That's one of many advantages of Kindles over real books. Here's another, and uh, what I need to do is go into here to show you it, and it's called WordWise. So if I tap on that, and I need to turn it on, so I'll just turn it on there with that radio button. Now the language, as you can see, is English United States. There's no English UK version, so not ideal, but uh, got no choice on that. And here we are. Now it's added uh, a short definition of each word. So this really is designed for people learning English and also for children, but of course anybody might find it useful. And there is a close-up as you can see, it's not at all bad for a 167 PPI screen. One problem with Kindles is that they start to lag after a while. In other words, you can tap three times to turn a page before anything happens. The solution is hold that on-off button in for about 10 seconds. I'm holding it in there. And the first thing I'll do is up pops this. I need to enter the passcode. As soon as I've done that, I get a pop-up screen, which is this one and I need to press restart, and that is a great solution for speeding up a lagging Kindle, which will happen, and I know people who have thought that they've needed to buy a new Kindle, done that, and it's cured it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this helpful.